Hello and welcome back to PHP Basics. My name is Sean. Up to this point in my journey of web development, I've relied on the MySQLi class for most of my projects. However, over the last six months or so, I found overwhelming evidence that PDO is simply the better way to go. Uh, PDO has more functionality than MySQLi and it's scalable to other database platforms like Postgres. It's really just becoming the industry standard. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to connect a PDO and how to query a database using prepared statements. Uh, so let's just jump right in. Uh, so I have a folder called PDO and in that folder I have my index file and I've also got a db.inc.php file. Uh, I've got both of those pulled up here in Notepad++. Let's take a look at the database real quick. I've got uh, a database called test and I've got a table called quotes with a name and then a favorite quote here. And this is what we're going to use uh, for example. All right, so to connect to PDO, let's just put in our PHP tags here. And it's actually really straightforward and simple. I'm gonna create a, data, a, a variable called DB and that's gonna equal new PDO. And then the first parameter is actually a string and we're going to specify the driver that we're using, which in this case is MySQL. The host is going to be localhost. The DB name, is going to equal test. And then I'm also going to specify the character set, which is going to equal UTF-8. We can close that string and then put a comma. The next parameter is our username and then our password, which for me is nothing. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and in my index page, I'm just going to include that file. So I'll say include db.inc.php. All right, so if I come here localhost slash pdo all right so i don't have any errors displaying on the screen which is a good thing uh, however if i were to go in and mess up my database name if i refresh this we're going to get this very long exception here and this is very bad because it's actually showing under the constructor our username and our password and part of our server name which is very very bad uh, so what we need to do is find a way to handle this exception just a little bit differently and only display the exception itself, which is it's an unknown database. OK, so in order to do that, we're actually going to change this up just a little bit. I'm going to copy this and delete it and we're going to use a try catch method. So I'm going to say try and I'm going to put in my DB there, my DB connection and then catch. We're going to use PDO exception and we're going to assign that to a variable called E for error. And uh, basically what it's going to try to do is make the connection to the database. And if it can't, it's going to grab that exception and we're just going to display the message of uh, whatever is assigned to this variable here. So we can say die if uh, it's not executed successfully. And we'll just say uh, connection error and then concatenate this and we'll just say E get message all right so now if we refresh the page it's only going to show us the part of the uh, message that we're looking for which is that it's an unknown database okay so this is it this is the only code that you really need to use when connecting to pdo now if you read the official documentation from php.net it's going to uh, give information about setting different attributes on how to handle the exceptions and setting the error mode the thing is, whenever it throws an exception, the PDI or the PDO constructor will automatically throw this exception here and assign it. So it's not necessary to do that. We'll always get the same result anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now let's start looking at how we can query the database with prepared statements and PDO. All right. So now that I've included the file, I want to start preparing that statement. So I'm going to create a variable just called STMT for statement, and that's going to equal a new PDO. So I'm just going to say um, a DB and prepare. And I'll simply say select all from quotes. And then at this point, all we have to do is execute this command. So we'll say execute. Now, at this point, nothing's going to happen because we've not told it to display anything on the page. However, if we wanted to count the number of rows returned, as opposed to doing num rows like you may be used to doing with MySQLi, we'll just echo stmt row Q 
count, which will display the same thing. So I had two records in my database. It should show two records in uh, on my page as soon as I correct my invalid database name. Let's save that and refresh. And here we can see it's actually set to two. Okay, so let's go back and uh, actually display this data on the page. All right, so we'll get rid of this. And I'll just say um, while row equals stmt fetch, which is a little bit different than the fetch a sock that you're used to using with MySQLi. And now everything else from here is pretty much the same. So we'll grab the name for each row and that's going to equal row name. And then the quote itself is going to be equal to row fave quote. All right, so now all we have to do is echo this out. So we can just say echo bold Italian italicized uh, quote and we'll do a line break here and then the name and then we'll do a paragraph break. All right, so now if we show this on the page, we should see uh, don't cry because it's over smile because it happened by Sean. And then if you're happy and you know it, it's your meds, which is by Chang. Chang is just a weird dude. He, uh, he smokes pot anyway. So there are the records from our database. All right, so now let's start throwing some conditions in here. So we're going to say uh, we just want to show any records where the name equals Sean. So typically we would do where name equals Sean. And you can do this, um, but the idea behind prepared statements is to avoid passing variables directly in the query itself. So we're just going to put a placeholder in for uh, in and we'll just say limit one. And below that, we're going to do stmt bind param. And for the placeholder, we're going to replace n with Sean. Now watch what happens whenever I try to execute this. It's gonna say that it can't pass parameter two by reference. And that's because you can't pass a string as a variable with prepared statements. So what I have to do is come up here and I'll create a variable called name and it's just going to equal Sean. And then I'll replace my string here with Sean and then we'll refresh the page. And let me see what I did wrong. Obviously I typed the wrong variable name. Let's try this again. All right, so now it's only going to show the quote put in by Sean. Now, if I wanted to do a wild card, so typically um, I would do a percent sign around my variable name, right? So if I were to do something like this, it's not going to show me anything. What I actually have to do is put that inside of the variable itself. So let me do this. And obviously this is only going to show Sean, but I'll go ahead and refresh my page here and change my condition to like. All right, so we can see that that showed Sean. And now if I just change this to the letter A, then it should show Sean and Chang. Let me remove my limit one. All right, so that's how you pass parameters and variables through prepared statements. So now let's talk about sending information to the database as well. So instead of selecting, I'm going to say, um, let's just hold on tight real quick. Let's do uh, name equals John and quote equals never try, never fail. All right, so this time we're going to do insert into, what was that called? Quotes, name, fave, quote, values, in for name and Q for quote. All right, so now I have to bind a parameter for Q. Okay, so what's gonna happen is it's going to execute this. And if I were to do something like, um, if stmt execute equals true, then display a message. Well, by then it's too late. So what we have to do is actually pass the execution in an if statement anyway. So I'll say if, and then we'll go ahead and execute that. And then we'll say uh, echo success and then else echo failure. All right, so now whenever I refresh my page, it's going to attempt to insert this record into the database. And it shows success. If I look back over here, then I can verify that that was added and it was. So this should provide a basic understanding of how PDO works and how to send queries to and from your database using simple prepared statements.